Got to do some things by myself. All right. Welcome, everybody, to another Monday night rookie roundtable call. I got some great guests joining me here today. I'm so excited, so honored, so ugh, so inspired. Uh, but before we get there, uh, just a little bit of things I wanted to share with everyone, what we're up to here with the Legends Equity Group. For anyone that is new here, thank you for taking the time out to joining us. You could be doing anything else in your life, but you're taking the time to be here. So, you know, uh, the invitation is to be here in a way that you're really going to get something from it. Okay. I'm at a point in my life where I feel just truly inspired by the endeavors and the things that I'm doing. So I hope that some of this energy rubs off wherever you are and whatever you're doing in your life. Hopefully by being here, you leave with some sort of inspiration, some sort of clarity uh, and, and hope. Right. Uh, just to share a little bit uh, while we wait for other people to hop on. This call was started like over two years ago. We've been doing this for over two years. 3,000 plus people have come through this call. Partnerships have been created. Real estate deals have been done together. It is truly a magical. Uh, I feel like there is some divine intervention that shows up on these calls. <laughs> and I know some people definitely share that, um, share that with me too. Today, the agenda is going to be, uh, I'll share for maybe five or five minutes or so about the fund that we are starting. And that's going to take place uh, Wednesday night. That's going to be the, where everyone that's interested have signed up. I think over 90 people have already signed up to be interested in creating a fund to fund. So I'll just go over that vision a little bit. And then we're going to go into uh, our guest speakers. These guys are legends all in their own rights. They all helped start this. They were here from the beginning. Okay. This call was started and the real estate deal, my multifamily journey began with these people. So you guys are going to get to meet them. We're going to talk about our journey. We're going to reflect a little bit on that, how we all got started in the game. And maybe that'll provide some sort of uh, direction for you if you are getting into the game of multifamily as well, right? I know there's a lot of people here looking for that first step. So we'll get there. And then we are going to break you guys out into rooms where you can meet each other. Okay, that's our kind of speed networking type of um, thing that we do here at the end of the calls. And we break you guys out into rooms of six. You'll get a chance to chat with each other, um, share what you know, what you're up to, what your gifts are, you know, in those rooms, definitely get what is it that you do? Where are you from? What are your challenges? What do you need? And what can you offer? Right? These are the things that every time you meet somebody, you should get those things out of the way. That way you can quickly tell if the, that person's going to be able to help you. Right? So I really hope that on this call, when you guys break out into rooms, that you will find the person Oftentimes I hear, oh my God, my room was so perfect. Hopefully you will find a person that will be the, be the door, right? Be the opening for uh, what's next for you. All right. So the fund that we are starting is the Legends Equity Group's fund number one. And this is just such an amazing vision, amazing project that we get to be a part of. Um, it is the Tony Shea Legacy Fund. So for those of you guys that don't know who Tony Shea is, he was a CEO of Zappos. He basically founded and funded them from the start and exited uh, through Amazon with about a billion dollars. If you want to know more of his vision and what he wanted to create, read the book, Delivering Happiness. His overall goal is that when you create the right culture, not only within your company, but if you create the right culture in your relationship to your clients and your customers, it will literally change everyone's experience and over, you know, and create happiness. All right. So his, his whole thing, his legacy that he wanted to leave behind was called the happiness movement and through Zappos and other companies and people coming to witness the way that they operate business, that people will start to follow suit. And from there kind of spread out and uh, cause a global shift. That was his vision. So, what he did in 2012 was he bought $350 million 
of real estate in the Fremont downtown area of Las Vegas. I looked at all of his properties, his portfolio. There's over 105 properties ranging from hotels <clears throat> to multifamily to warehouses to entire city blocks. Okay, Almost every single city block that is available in the downtown Fremont area belongs to the Shea estate now. Now, Tony passed away in 2020. And so everything was brought into probate. He didn't leave a will or anything. So the estate has about three years to uh, liquidate the entire asset. What they're looking for is somebody with vision that is community focused, right? Tech, tech and business focused. You know, these are these are things that he his vision was to bring people together. And I believe that our community is the perfect uh, team perfect people to come together and carry on this really big legacy. So <clears throat> that is what we want to create. And as some of you guys know that have been here, I'm always thinking about how to bring other people along with me. How do we, how do we empower more people? How do we create, uh, you know, financial freedom for everyone? My ultimate goal is to end world poverty. Okay. I don't believe that anywhere in the world should there not be clean water, that people shouldn't have the necessities and people should be hungry. There is no reason why that exists in the world today. Okay. There's really no reason. Any of the fortune 500 companies, any of the five large funds out there can end world hunger today, but some, for some reason it's not happening or it's not done. All right. So that's my ultimate goal. So what I've created is, you know, I've taken the fund to fund model, which is something that is really, uh, something that is, uh, what do you call it? That is pretty popular now, right? Richard Pennington has been really talking about funds and funds is really the highest level that you can really play at when it comes to the investment world and the private equity world. Okay, so fund at the very highest level. Mostly what we'll be talking about on this call uh, from week to week is in the multifamily space. Okay, I believe when you understand how multifamily is done because it really requires you to play on a team, that single family and smaller deals become much more feasible because you're surrounded by people that are talking about something much bigger. All right, so the fund to fund model is basically there is going to be Legends Equity Fund. We have the Tony Shea Legacy Fund as our first real estate fund. And above that is going to be everyone that wants to be a part of the fund to funds. We are going to build your fund to fund for you. We're going to build the investment thesis, your pitch deck, how to raise the capital. Uh, we actually have a proprietary blockchain um, uh, blockchain product that is going to monitor the entire transaction from the main fund all the way up to the fund to funds. Okay, What that means is every single transaction is recorded. It takes away people's ability to commit any sort of fraud. All right, so everything from, from our end all the way up to the fund to funds is going to be uh, managed by, by Proxy Financial. You guys will hear more about that on Wednesday. And um, yeah, it's just, it's such a, it's such a game-changing thing. My, my securities attorneys basically said, we've never even seen this. Like, we've never seen a vision this big. We've never seen what you're creating here. And we really think that it's going to be uh, globally impactful. Okay, and, and because of that, we're going to need everyone to be a part of it. Okay, if you want to, if you feel inspired at any point, you know, just type in alexlovely.com backslash fund and join us Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. I will bring on my securities attorney. I'll bring on Proxy Financial. We will share the vision. We'll share how it's structured. Now, <clears throat> the reason why this fund not only is going to impact the world and it's going to be probably the most profitable fund is because I've also secured a family office backing that is giving me $500 million upfront to be able to buy real estate. What that means is every single deal that we purchase, okay, from the fund is gonna come from, we have a manufacturing plant basically. It's like owning a gas station and, only, and also owning the oil well at the same time, right? And that is gonna translate right all the way up to our investors that we will go and build class A buildings and once it's done and stabilized, we will sell it back to our fund, okay, in such a way that is going to create massive profits. So 
very, very inspiring, uh, exciting things that we're going to be up to. Also, the type of debt that we can get, nobody else can get. Okay, I've shared this multiple times. Grant Cardone can't get debt like this. Okay, if you think about any one of you guys out there doing deals, can you get 10 years IO 3.75% interest rate? Nope. All right, so this is something that I also have access to now. And that's why with the debt and the large capital backing, uh, we are going to be able to get the best deals and uh, just deals that can't really, you know, other people can't buy. All right. So that is our, you know, I'm not going to go any more into it. I believe it's truly a once in a lifetime opportunity that we get to develop an entire downtown of a city. It's not just a single asset. Okay. That means we get to determine and control the market in all aspects. So I, I don't know where else there's an opportunity like this especially in the most popular city in the entire world that we really get to transform this, make a name for our fund and everyone gets to be on the front end of it. This is an invitation to our community first before we bring it out to the world. All right. So you guys will definitely be seeing a lot of this uh, and hearing a lot of it in the probably coming weeks. All right. Next, let me bring my, my guest speakers on. I know they're just patiently waiting. So let me bring let me bring my boys on here with us. Let's see. Boom. Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at, Danny? Ah. Now where am I? Am I am I here? No, I'm not here. You're not there, dude. Where'd you yeah. go? Huh? Where's me? There you are. You're up there in the upper left. Yeah, but how come Spotlight. I can't be how come I can't be here with you guys? We got to get you down <laughs> with us. No, I messed up. Hold on. Let me do it again. <laughs> I'm so good, man. Like, you know, Danny. There he is. Um, there he is. Guys, man, they, they are so awesome. You guys better listen in, man. You, you're in for a treat tonight. Dude, seriously, I sent out an invite to them. I mean, Mike Bailey is also is our fifth musketeer, but uh, he's on a flight back from, I think, somewhere in Asia. But uh, Singapore, Singapore, right? Singapore. So Johnny <clears throat> is Johnny actually, you know, I joked th about this with him, but he gave me COVID over the phone. And then we started <laughs> doing deals together. He, I was in Shreveport, Louisiana, parked uh, in a Tesla charge, charging station. And I, had, I didn't even I don't even know if we met at Grant Cardone's conference, but you called me and we talked on the phone and you're like, you want to do a deal in Shreveport, Louisiana? I'm like, I'm freaking parked. It's 12 o'clock in the morning. I'm parked in Shreveport, Louisiana right now. And this is what you're bringing to me. I'm like, there's got to be, this can't happen by accident, right? So Johnny introduced me to Mike Bailey. He introduced me to Thomas. He introduced me to Danny. And they brought me on to my first multi-unit deal. We did a 42-unit industrial storage deal in Savannah, Georgia, which is freaking killing it right now. And then we ended up doing like a bunch more deals together in one year. I think we did over like 500, 600 units in like such a short period of time. We, right? we did, a, I, I want to say it was about $20 million worth of deals. And that was my first million. year. Okay. So for everyone, like ev I talk about return on relationships and the focus on relationships all the time. And these are the guys that I got so blessed to start my journey with. And we were legends. Legends was, these were the OGs. You know, these are the OG legends, so it's just such an honor for me to bring you guys on. Why don't you guys just talk a little bit about yourselves, share what you're up to, what do you do, and um, and we'll go on from there. Start with you, John. Um, so I'm John Sedotti. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. My background was actually construction management, and I have been in real estate since 2013. So just about 10 years. Um, and I went from two units to today, we're over a thousand GPLP units um, in the portfolio. And we are uh, in both the uh, multifamily residential and multi tenant industrial. Um, and you love that industrial. Real estate is a huge passion of mine. Um, I do this full time. I I am very fortunate to be uh, 
playing in real estate every day full time. So, yeah, um, freaking sick. It's You're cool. amazing. Dude, so me and John used to talk on the phone all the time. My my wife would joke that me and him had this bromance going on because <laughs> we would literally talk on the phone like seven times a day. I was like, John, what? Uh, you haven't called me the in a while. What's going on? <laughs> Dude, super good to see you. Miss you, man. Yeah. Great seeing you. Likewise, okay. likewise. All right, Thomas. Thomas is like, I always feel like Thomas is like, like our dad. <laughs> in the deals <laughs> like we get in trouble like uh thomas we're in trouble <laughs> so go ahead thomas share with everyone what you're up to who you are hey hello everybody hey my name is tom bb Varghese. i'm based in houston i'm so blessed to be with you guys man i mean i'm just i was just listening to your story your vision man it just uh blew my mind away where you have started and where you have uh you're going i'm very inspired by that that really inspired me touched me and, uh, you know, this uh, Alex Lovely, man, he's a great guy. He's got a great heart. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm excited to see what's ahead for you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, by the way, John and I, we connected. We all connected. This is the greatest thing that came about in my real estate journey is that I got to meet these people. Uh, these are relationships that I would have never ever connected with in my life uh if it was not for real estate or for these conferences that i went to right so i i believe that was um like alex was saying was divinely orchestrated uh and uh and uh, we started doing deals and uh I, in the in the first three months i think we signed four deals <laughs> so yeah and uh and then we took a pause, but uh, man, it was a journey. But by the way, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I had a business. I exited that business and I have another, a couple other businesses and I do real estate. I started with six units uh, by myself in 2019. And uh, uh, that was like a smaller deal. And then today um, with GPLP together, I'm at about 1800 units and uh, GP probably about 1200 units. So I'm very blessed uh, because of these partners and these uh, relationships. And um, thank you guys. Uh, great to be here. Was it your marketing company that you exited? Yeah. Wow. Sick. <laughs> I remember, remember you having that in Chicago. Yeah. Do you, do you, would you, can you share the details of it? Do you want to share? Well, that, I mean, I can share like? a little, I can okay. share a little, yeah, I can share a little bit. I started uh, it in my basement um by myself and then i was uh -huh. able to grow it into a team of about 12 to 15 people and then i started um you know securing government contracts and all that stuff anyway um i had a private equity firm reached out to me and said they were interested in buying and i was interested in doing more real estate because that one is a more of a, a lot of a real customer touch customer intensive business right so Although I had people working for me and all that stuff, I still have to get involved every now and then. So I thought, man, maybe I should just get out. And uh, I believe it was the right time to get out and uh, just focused on real estate after that right now. So that's the short end of it. How much was your exit? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Come on. That's what we were all waiting Not for. Enough. It's never <laughs> enough. It's never enough. Dude, you, that's it's a story of like every great entrepreneur is started in their basement and then they did this and then they yeah. exit it and I, i've heard like people say oh i started in my basement half of the times they did not start in the basement but i truly did start in my basement you know? oh shit all yeah. right fine fine don't tell us tell me later uh danny what's up man so danny is just one of the funnest guys i've ever been around okay him and his wife are just a blast to be around and He's like a master roofer. Look at the size of his house. Look at that back there. Yeah, Sheesh. look at that. He Damn. built it himself. I know. Yeah. We got, we're all trying to grow up to be like that. With his own two hands. <laughs> With his it. own two hands. Yeah. Part of the parts of being in the construction industry, right? Oh, man. All right. All right. So tell us who you are and when, what you up to and, you know, all of that. Um. Danny Haruki out of Austin, Texas, uh, started my own roofing company back in 2015. Um, that, that's that been just phenomenal, uh, especially these last three or four years, for sure. Um, and then kind of got into the real estate stuff towards the end of 21. 
um, which when I met most of you guys, um, I think it was that one conference in December, I believe, of 21, I think is what it was. Um, and then, yeah, what, by May, we had those four deals closed or five or March. I don't even remember. <laughs> it happened so fast. Like, it did. It's like from zero to like 500 units, as a GP, like instantly. It was crazy. Um, so, yeah. And then I've got, I'm a, about 1,500 units as an LP. Um, but, and I think John's in pretty much every deal I'm in. If I had, if I had to go look at the list. Um, but yeah, we've been looking at some industrial stuff. Um, Congrats on your fund, by the way. That I was wow. I didn't I didn't know you were doing that. That's very interesting. Thank you, thank uh, you. So congrats on that, man. Um, and thank thanks for having us on the call. And if there's anything we can do to help anybody, definitely let us know. We're, we're more than happy to inspire or pass something along or offer or whatever. Um, oh, we gonna do that tonight yeah. for Let's sure. Let's go. That's yeah. it. If you I need any roofing happens. support, if you got roofing questions, you know, probably <laughs> hit up it. Danny. Danny, Danny's someone that's uh, you know, seasoned in the game. He, yeah, he I got roofing in my sleep, so I, <laughs> he knows a little it. about roofing. That's it, man. Yeah, awesome. But that's pretty much it. It's been a phenomenal journey, man, and um, the people I've met, just it's been fantastic. I mean, that's been the coolest part, I think, of all of it. It's just hmm. the people. I mean, just worldwide. I mean, we're not even talking U.S., right? And so it's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Hey, if you guys want to share your information, feel free to type it in the chat, you know, to, um, you know, because I'm sure there's probably people that may want to reach out to you based on what you guys are going to share, right? So there, look at that. Johnny's already ready. He's got that. He's yeah, got copy good. and paste right there on his desktop. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually have it in a Word document. Yeah, I yeah, just... I bet. Danny's probably like typing it out right now. <laughs> no, I am. That's it. I ain't that prepared. I'm typing it too. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So so let's go back. Let's reflect a little bit on our first deal, like how we all came together, what the roles that we played, right? Because this whole thing is like people are like, I don't know how to buy a multifamily deal or multi-unit deal, right? Like what does it take for it to happen? What roles so, are there? What's Alex, available? Why, why don't you... Uh... What do you think, Bryce? Should we go so through definitely Bryce? Bryce, Bryce ah. is like, you know, Bryce was like, you guys pop my cherry in Bryce. You know, and it's cool because these guys are literally watching me grow up. You know, I'm like, I was like so, a little baby. And, and, all right. So <laughs> yeah, how, how early do you want to go in, in on that one? Oh, I mean, let's just go from the start. You know, let's all go right. From so start. from from the start, it was November. Oh, okay. So even before no, my time, it was there. November. I squeezed that myself all started in there. Before I met you, before I, uh, I think Thomas and I had met at Thomas. You, Mike, and I had met. Matt, right? At Cardone in September. Yeah, September. It's a picture deal. July. September. July. Mm -mm, okay. July. July. No, the, July. It, no it, was a, it was a picture deal in September. Because right, right. I pitched, I pitched the behemoth FBI building. <laughs> yep. The, yeah. the Grant still talks about today. Ask him about the FBI building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking um, of speaking of Grant's conference, it's coming up in December. Where you guys happen to be going, or what? I I actually I've been grounded by my wife, so <laughs> I, I can't go. Okay, okay. I'll yeah. I'll be out of the country, so I won't be there um either oh, i'm gonna man. try are you going yeah i'm going last minute right, i just decided like yesterday oh, I was also, in, also i got i got like out. i got like thirty thousand dollars of store credit so if you need a ticket just oh, let me my know goodness. i'll like knock off like 30 percent of it you know and <laughs> well, what's the date of it alex uh 16th to the 18th yeah i i could go to that <laughs> I cat, mean, you so gotta get on ground cat, first <laughs> cat 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 so Cat's having a baby. She oh. told me two months before she has the baby, I have to stay in Boston. That's Listen, it. if you want, if you want to go, your ticket's on me, bro. If you want to go, at least I got you your your ticket for that. We'll we'll connect after. This. All right, all right. Um, cool. So, so, so basically, continue. it started at the Cardone conference. We all um, we all met uh, Tom. Or actually, Tom, Mike, and I met in September. November, I get this deal on the contract. This uh, three and a half million, three point six five million dollar 
asset in Savannah, Georgia. I had we we had no idea it was going to take off the way it did. We um we started doing due diligence. You know, where where uh what were we doing? We had, we had like four deals going on, so we didn't know which way it was up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh I I met Alex at the December conference and I was like Alex, you're good at raising, right? Raising money, raising equity. So we brought Alex on for the raise. Danny came on because he knows construction. I was like, damn, let, let's get Danny on to, you know, look, look at this inspection report and uh, kind of spearhead that. And Tom, Mike, and I will be the brains. And <laughs> and uh, we, we kind of, uh, Tom, Tom and Mike signed on debt. Uh, we came up with a plan on the asset. And then we, uh, a couple months later in May, we closed. And uh, mm-hmm. so, it so... Won, one weekend, one, the last weekend leading up to it, I think it was like the sixth, seventh, and eighth or something. Mm-hmm. That last weekend, we needed about six hundred thousand dollars. We were six hundred thousand dollars short, and Alex and I slammed the phones that weekend, <laughs> and we made it happen. Yeah, I I still tell people about that, and I'm like, I'm so excited about that, you know, dude. I I I remember. So look, this is how a deal is done, guys. A deal is done. You need somebody to find the deal, right? So John found the deal. And then we needed somebody to put some money down to get it under contract. So I think, Danny, you played a big role in that, yeah? Okay, okay so, uh, yeah, some of us, uh, some of you guys did, but I didn't do anything. I didn't put no money down, right? And then you need to, somebody's got to know how to manage the assets. So John and Danny, you know, they have experience in that space. So you got that. And then you have to raise the capital for the down payment. And that was like one point something million dollars, right? And then so we got to raise that money. And then you need somebody to sign on to the debt. Basically, what John covered was these are the teammates that you need to have happen. There's like five steps, five things, right? And it just so happens there's five of us. You could be play, you could play multiple roles or you know, or whatnot, but um that's what we put together. I didn't I didn't even bring any money to the deal. I didn't bring any money to the hey, deal, and I was, and I was all in the coming money to the deal. I know, but personally, <laughs> I didn't. Right. So, for some of you guys that may have the belief, like when I have the money, then I can do it. That is not true. You just need the right people. Everyone is like one person away, and one like being able to trust somebody away from being able to do <clears> your first deal. The multifamily deal, like Thomas and Mike, like they signed on to the debt. I think you did too, right, John? So for for all the deals that we did in the first couple, I was like, damn, that was easy. I did I did the easy part. I felt like I was like I didn't have to worry about anything besides you got to watch. capital. Yeah, <laughs> I got I got like you know they babied me, and this is what I'm talking about. When you guys are looking for partners too, you don't want to look for guys that are already doing thousands of units, right? You don't really want to look for you want to look for the people that are like right there to be ahead of you, someone that is just ahead of you that can give you the time, give you the knowledge give you the the energy to handhold you through it. That, I learned, that's very, I learned that, so much. Yeah. That's very important that you said that don't look at people who are like ultra successful in that in that space, right? Because they are not going to have time for you and they don't need anything. They got it all set. They got employees. They got the whole team figured out. I mean, you just need to look at somebody maybe one step ahead of you where you can bring your skills in. Like, see, Alex makes it so easy when he says, hey, uh, raising money was the easy part. But for some people, that is the hardest part. Raising money is the hardest part for a lot of people, actually. Uh, but for people like Alex, Alex who's, who looks good and who looks very innocent and uh, who's got a following. <laughs> I can trust this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, it's very easy for him, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, you just have to look at the skill set and see – where you can bring it. I heard somebody say that everything you need in life is in the hands of somebody else. So Ooh. you need to connect with people. Um, you need everything in life that you need. I mean, even 
if you are a believer in God, God's not going to drop anything from heaven. It's, he's going to do it through people. So you need people. You need connections. You need you need uh, relationships. That's what's going to get you to to your next uh, level, right? So, and and that's why I'm very impressed with what Alex is doing. He's doing all these breakout rooms. You get to connect with people, and you never know. I mean, John and I, we connected, and Mike, we just connected over that, and we bonded a little bit, and then everybody's vision, everybody's uh, motivations were uh, and, and aligned, and we did did a deal, right? You just have to be a little careful um, that, I mean, we got lucky that, you know, we were all on the same page and there was nobody <laughs> trying to scam anybody out and stuff like that. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is, that is the thing, right? Sometimes yeah. people also want to hop in there real quick and jump on any team, but you got to at least know the people that are like, you know, making the decisions. Right. And the other thing that Thomas said about working with somebody that is just a little bit ahead of you too, you can ask you, the, the gap that you fill, you can actually get some equity from. If you go and go and you go find Grant Cardone, you need to be offering massive value for a very long time for no money. And maybe yeah. you'll get like a little scrape of something, right? Like a little crumb of something. Because yeah. you're not really needed. Nothing you can bring to the table is something that he doesn't have. So that's why when you guys are getting together, it's like, where are you in the game, right? What can I bring to the table? The other Look, thing also, I think, you know, you should say when you form teams, right? So the other, like a couple of months ago, somebody said, hey, man, I know that you guys did some deals and all that. We want some advice. And I said, sure, man, I can share with you. And then he said, I'll bring my team on. And that team was, no kidding, 12 people. Dang. That was, I, I think that's too much, too many people, <laughs> you know, decisions yeah. won't get done and there will be something that goes wrong. I mean, 12 is too, too, too much. You got to find, I mean, maybe like five, six people max, right? Not mm -hmm. more than that. When you form a team to do deals. Yeah. What do you think guys? Is that, is that fair to say that? I agree. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree. You gotta be, you gotta have some real mm -hmm. big, you know, you gotta be, I don't know, on some real high level leadership in order to lead that many people in a deal. But yeah. I think what you're saying too also is like the the number of like main decision makers gets to be limited. Yeah. So you know? I, I'd i like to butt in here. Um, on, on these deals, they, they don't move fast. They don't move fast so that like if you're paying attention to them, you're going to be able to catch anything. However, if you stop paying attention to them, they'll move real fast in the direction you don't want them to move in. And so, I mean, really, it's you you got to have someone that can focus a good amount of their time on these deals. And e even though you have a property manager on it, you have to be watching everything they do. You have to be in touch with them on every step of the way and that that's one thing that has really stuck out to me and has really been um kind of a uh a separator today in the economy and what's going on no doubt yeah um i mean i'm i'm sure all of you see what's going on in the market so Danny, what about you, man? How, how, what was your experience in that whole partnership? It was a little, man, a little it, insight. experience. It was for sure. You know, on, <laughs> on the Bryce deal, I brought some of the risk money. Um, and, and to speak to your note, I mean, half these deals, I got money and half of them I don't. Right. But it's, it's your other traits that you bring to the team or the table. Right. Obviously mine being the construction background on that side of the due diligence is, um, where I kind of fit in um, on this particular team, um, you know, it's it's a crucial part of it. Um, and then obviously with you raising money, John doing his operations, and I don't even I don't even know what John all did on some of those deals. I know it was a <laughs> lot <laughs> contract review. I mean, there was so much going on in those thirty or forty five days that I was I it was hard to keep up with you all. Like there was just the, the messages were out of control, right? But it takes those brains and somebody running the main operation on that team to keep all that stuff intact. Who's raising money? What's getting transferred? The tribe vest. I mean, right? Like there's a lot of components to it. 
So, you know, after that whole experience, it was like, dang, you know, that's why you got to have a team to take some of these deals down. There's just for one guy or two guys to sit there, gals, whatever, to sit there and do that. I mean, that that would just be a tremendous amount of work. And we're talking one deal, right? I mean, yeah. so I think it's just crucial to just, you know, be able to team up with people that you're kind of compatible with. And that's kind of got a trait you don't like what Thomas was saying um so I, that was my experience in it um it was phenomenal it was awesome um it just it takes it takes a team man yeah so team. i got i got a question for you guys like during that time so i just it just took me 11 months to close this one deal right that, that we're doing that we did in vegas and it was stressful as heck going through the documents and you know getting approved on the loan doing all this stuff and brunting the the responsibility and the stress of it on my shoulders. I remember doing it with you guys on the deals and felt like there wasn't really like that much stress, you know, even at times when we're like, Oh shit, we're not going to make it. And then it's like, Thomas, can you like cut a check to cover our asses? Right. <laughs> we're like, we'll continue the raise, but we just need you to cut a check so we can close the deal. I mean, it's just so important, all the different aspects of the team and, and really Alex, have a peace of mind. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. How do you eat an elephant? You eat it from its freaking butt, from the tail. You start with no, the bite on the tail. One, one bite at a time. That's what I said. One bite at a time. <laughs> so you, you you chip <laughs> away at it, man. <laughs> you, you don't take it all on it all at once. You you look at it one one part. Today I'm gonna get through all. The I don't eat meat, dude. Me. I don't eat meat. Okay, That's I don't true. eat meat. It doesn't work for me. So how how do you eat a tree? I I, I don't eat a tree. But hey, look who's joining us. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Oh, there oh, he is. The Mike. legend. Mike. <laughs> hey, Mike. There he is. Mike. Mike Bailey, ladies and gentlemen. Frozen. That's a picture. Is it a I lounge or something? Or, yeah. Right. <laughs> No, I just grabbed but, the but but Alex, I mean, you brought up a very valid point. Like people who are new to this, they don't understand the technicalities involved in getting a deal done. Even just getting the PSA signed itself yeah. is like a back and forth. You got to send it to the lawyer. You got to read. Then he'll be like, okay, these points. Then you send it. I mean, if it's one guy handling all this, man, it's it's way too much. Oh yeah, I I I, I learned. I learned. I learned yeah. what you guys had to deal with. You know, I had to go and walk on my own for a little bit. But look, I remember going through this with you guys and literally never reading a single contract. <laughs> I didn't read a single contract. I didn't read one thing. You know how much stuff I've read in the last like 11 months? Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. So I, I hope you guys, I hope everyone that's watching, you guys are just getting a sense, you know, of what the partnerships looks like, what it should be like. You know, I think we're going to be, we're going to be like boys forever. You know, like I'm just so. Oh, there she is. Oh, hey, there is. What up, Cash Moss? What's up? <laughs> Moss is in town. <laughs> oh, behind man. every man is uh, behind every successful is man is a woman, right? Is the boss? <laughs> it's the real like boss. One. That's it. <laughs> oh, I miss you. I miss you guys. Um, okay, so yeah, for everyone that's listening, I hope you guys are getting like a sense of how a deal was done, you know, and, and it can be pretty effortless if you have a good relationship and we compliment each other. Like we literally, I couldn't have asked for a better complimentary team, right? Like if there was like five of me, it will, it would not work out. Right. It would be like, anybody read the contract? I'm not reading it. You reading it. It would, it would have been terrible. Right. And then John is like a rock star with the, with the asset management. Cause after the deals done, what do we do? Do we close like three deals in one weekend or something? We close. So we had Saul Ross. That something legendary. <laughs> March March 4th. Saul Ross closed March 4th. I had a... I had a deal closed March 16th in North Carolina. Then we had... East Haven closed March 24th. Then we had Bennett closed April 4th. How the hell you remember all this? Then like we that? had then Bryce closed May 10th. 
I for some reason in my mind I was like Bryce Solros East Haven close back to back in in a weekend or something. <laughs> that's weird. All right, that's my that's my. Well, it, but, it it happened real quick, and we were raising the entire time. Yeah, I mean, and we did webinar I, after webinar after webinar. Like it was well, re- we, on the we, whatever. We were came. on Cardone's webinar. We were on <laughs> Rod Queef's webinar. We were on. Uh, Alex's Monday night webinars. We were on <laughs> webinars about webinars, and then we had webinars to schedule the webinar for the, the next <laughs> webinars webinar. to schedule the webinars. <laughs> yeah, listen, if you're in this game, get ready to just be using Zoom all the time. Zoom yeah. like or this, this is this is the game. You, you know, gotta get your Zoom game up. Go with a phone call. Uh it's it's less. I mean, if we can see each other's <laughs> face, you know that that works better. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. It's so funny. I'm still looking at Mike's face. Let me close this thing. All right, well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna keep it up. It's just like Mike is here, you know. Hey, Mike. Um. Yeah. So, anybody have? If you have any questions too, you know, put it in the chat, or you can raise your hand. We'd love to bring you guys up here to join with us too, because this was like it, it's just I'll never forget this journey, man. The people that you guys start with, like you'll be grateful for for the rest of your life. You know, especially if you were as blessed as if you can even be as blessed as we are to come together in the way that we did. Man, crazy. All right. Hawk is here. Everybody knows Hawk. Hawk is like the most famous person ever. Let's go. Oh, you guys are pretty. Hey, hey, man. Uh, so no, I, I just got a special story about each one of these guys. <laughs> um, so the so funny thing. So. Uh, when I first made the mindset shift to get into multifamily, the first person who reached out to me was Danny the man. Oh, I, rem- I remember. The man. I remember the first Grant Cardone conference I was at. <laughs> Danny was like, man, brought me in. and was like, man, I got your brother. You know, I, w- I want to show you how to do this thing. And it just changed my mindset. Second was the man, John Sedoti. So John, so funny thing, John uh, was uh, down here looking at a, I think a 120 unit property. So what are you- <laughs> 120 unit property, and I'm like, like man, damn, John, like oh, it was like 420 units. I'm sorry, 420 <laughs> units. Yeah, yeah. So, so look, so look, so look. It, oh, it was it was 120. It was 120 million. Million, yeah, yeah, 120 million for was- like 300 units. 300, something like that, yeah. But it, that was the asking price, right? So, you know, I'm like, man, John, like, man, let me let me walk the deal with you, man. You're in my town, man. Come on, let me let me walk the deal with you. So we walked the deal, man. I saw how John was manipulating the, the brokers, and you know, like my, this- Mike Mike shows up in a in like a, a three piece Armani suit, <laughs> dri- dri- driving his Tesla with the big rims. <laughs> Actually, it was like a hoverboard Tesla. It was pretty badass. He rolls up in that, and I'm, I'm here in my uh my rental car Hyundai Elantra or something. I think yeah, uh, it, it it was like a Flintstone car, and uh and, and we walked this this 400 unit building, unbelievable, absolutely incredible. Was it in Strata, Mike? Yeah, in Strata, in Strata, and Pentagon. In Strata. It, it was like a three hundred fifty unit, one hundred twenty million dollar yeah. asset. Absolutely incredible. Downtown Arlington, Virginia. CIA agents are the tenants. They don't exist. It's right. like absolutely incredible. <laughs> CIA, FBI. You know, all, to buy all that the building? government workers. What's that? They let you walk that building. Oh yeah. They, oh, yeah, they didn't right. have to get our licenses. We Listen, knew the brokers. Yeah. Are you the <laughs> one that got Hawk to just like constantly be looking at these massive $120 million deals? It's, it's what he brings to the table. He's like, dude, I got this $100 million deal. <laughs> Bro, John started, it, John started, it, is, that, is that all you're looking at, Mike? <laughs> No, no, not anymore. Not anymore. But okay, some, good. it's too hard to turn down. All right. So, 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 John, so I walked a couple other deals with John. And I brought him a, I brought him a cigar. So I, I'll never forget that, John. That that cigar was absolutely incredible. Thank you, thank you, Michael. In the last story about Thomas, so Thomas, so funny thing, Thomas and I would see each other on Zooms, right? And and Thomas would be spitting knowledge like he did tonight, right? And so Thomas is like, okay, well, you know, this, I have this deal, right? Making Georgia, right? 
Macon, Georgia. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh. and he's like, do you want to invest in it? I'm like, let's walk through it. And he, he walked through it with me and whatever. And I'm sold, man. That was the first deal I got into. And it just changed my whole trajectory with the whole business. So, you know, these guys and then Mike Bailey, of course, the legend. Funny thing, real quick about Mike. So he's Mike. And that's why I had to take on the name Hawk. Because we can't have two mics in the same space. It's too much. It's too much. It's not enough space for both of us. So he's Mike. I'm Hawk. So we'll just go with that. But no, these guys. I want just want to underscore the the fact that each one of these guys bring a value, right? So in this networking session, if you network virtually in person, you know, just go and and just reach out to people. You never know what they can bring to the table. Each one of these guys played a special role in my career in multifamily. So I just want to thank you guys, man. You know, you're my guy for life. Um. Yeah, man. I'm just. I'm just so giddy. I'm just. So, I feel like a little kid. So, <laughs> Dude, it's like a family awesome. reunion. It's a return of the OGs. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mike. Yeah. Thanks. That was awesome. Who else? Who's got? A, who's got a question for us? Oh, here we go. What's up, Fraser? Fraser Laser. Alex. Yo. Hey. awkward go ahead gabby you go first well that was my first deal and the vice so i just wanted to thank you guys because uh you made it really easy of course you smile and then that's how uh you introduced me to the deal and i was so new to it but john is so awesome though like like he's just such an amazing person each one of you guys so thank you so much oh gabby, Thanks, thank gabby. You. Yes, Gabby is one of our first, like, just really believed in us from the start. Yeah, you know, she's another. She's definitely another OG, part of our part of our beginning. Yeah, she is, yeah. She, she's I mean, been an idea yeah, since the beginning. <laughs> All right, Fraser. Uh, so my, my question first is for Danny because he's in construction. So, like, I'm a plumber. I live in Canada. My goal is to move from Canada to the United States to be closer to my daughter. Um, so like what kind of advice would you give someone like myself when getting established and starting this whole journey? Right. I'm very, I'm pretty new to this, this now for, well, I guess it's been for about since August, since I've known Alex and I, I've been very fixated on what Alex is doing because I really see that he has a true passion and, and uh, good qualities that he has to me resonated really well for, for me. So I'm just wondering, like, like coming from like the construction background, like yourself, what kind of things do you offer in it f to help people? So that kind of gets you into the, the due diligence, the DD, right? Um, I mean, setting up inspection reports. I mean, pay for the inspectors, right, is one of the things I do. Get get all that organized, get it set up. And so then you'll take this, I don't know, 75-page inspection report, right? And all these guys are busy. They don't have time to read through this. So I'll read through and I'll condense it down to maybe one page, maybe two, depending on what's going on within that report, right? And just just so it's easy but here are the high points immediate things we need to do okay maybe a little bit short term longer term xyz whatever it is and so i mean being a plumber i mean you probably know more about construction than just plumbing i would assume um right just being in the trades um in the industry so i think if you can get on a team where you can really leverage um you know that aspect of it I think it would be huge um, and, and just take that role on of saying, hey, I'll set up the inspectors. I'm going to review all this stuff. I'll crunch it down. I mean, and there's some other stuff you can do, too, on the team. There's a, like, as you can see, there's a lot of moving parts to this stuff. But um, at least that's one where, you know, OK, I got this. And if you need some help with that, just reach out to me. And let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. Um but that's where I that's where I started um, with these guys. Actually, I just said, "Hey, I'll take care of it," and I I took it from there. Does that awesome. answer your question? Does that help? Yeah, that absolutely does. And yes, I do have. A, I've been in, in construction since I was fourteen. So yeah, you go. and you're good, man. <laughs> you got value to add, man. That's 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 a lot of value right there. You're gonna save people time, and the reason why we invest money is to save time, right? So. 
that's that's a way to get equity in a deal is to to think in that space like how do i save people time and and use and give my expertise in, in this space awesome all right josh oh, awesome awesome it's a pleasure to be able to ask this question and talk to you guys uh but you know you guys mentioned briefly here and there talking about the idea of community being able to support each other so i have a three-part question for you guys to make it a little interesting uh okay. so first obviously uh, one is, what is one shortcoming that you uh, felt as your team, this kind of four or five, uh, adding on the other guy, um, this this type of team, what shortcoming were you, was able to be kind of supported by other other members within this community? Two, what superpower do you bring to this community? And three, what did you learn about yourself being part of this group and being able to kind of execute deals together, if that makes sense? All right, let's start with question number one. What was it again? What shortcomings did we see we what had? What was the shortcoming? Yeah, personally speaking, what was the shortcoming that you felt that you had and that you, that, you know, your team members were able to kind of come in and support you on and be able to kind of build off that? I mean, I'll start. I, I have a couple shortcomings. Like, I've really never read a contract until, like, you know, really meeting these guys, even after. All right, so I knew that being that that like detail oriented person going through like i'm a very big vision person the second i come down to the details i'm like where am i who am i All right so you know I, I knew that these guys were going to be able to support me and two i've never signed on to a, a, a commercial loan before so i didn't know what that whole process was right and <laughs> chris says I, I i i see blurry yeah i mean you so get that, into the details my, bro you just go blurry <laughs> yeah once we go into the details i'm like you just my head just my eyes just rolled to the back of my head but yeah that that's something that i felt like my shortcoming plus i had no idea i mean getting into the game i've done a lot of residential real estate but commercial is a whole nother beast i felt like i just walked in and they held my hand and walked me all the way to the finish line it was nice yeah you guys can share that uh, we can start with danny danny go ahead let me know your shortcoming what you thought you know uh, the other team was able to kind of support you through. I mean, it would probably be pretty similar to Alex. I mean, I've done a bunch of residential, never was in prior to these first few deals in the commercial space. Um, you know, yeah, I read contracts, but it's more construction industry stuff, right? Um, not so much real estate, PSAs, and all of that, that jargon that I was trying to learn at the time. <laughs> Right. I mean, and it's a lot of it. It was like taking some of that stuff through a fire hose, man. Um, so I think just knowing that I was partnered with guys that had that side of that covered. It, I mean, it's a huge relief, right? Like, you know, OK, I've got these three other guys, Mike, Thomas, John, that this is they got this right. So I, I would probably say a lot of that legal stuff was was probably most of my shortcoming and really some of the process too. I mean, it was all new at the time of, you know, LOI to PSA to this, to this due diligence. Right. I mean, it's just, it's kind of a checklist and, and these guys had it under control. And so that, that's probably my biggest one. Yeah. Heard. And let's go through the whole rotation, right? We talked about your shortcoming. I know you, you briefly talked about your superpower being able to kind of comb through the, constru the construction due diligence side of things. So, with that being said, it was something you kind of learned about yourself being part of this. Well, hold on. I, I actually want to hear what John and Thomas have to say about this question. So, no, I, I, of course, I wanted to kind of go down the rotation, but if anything, just like, yeah, kind of yeah. I mean, all well, once, you know? I don't know about going through like a whole series of questions, but you know, let's, let's, I, I'm, I'm curious about what John, what John felt like his shortcomings were. This is a good question, actually. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Me? Mm -hmm. Um, so my, my, shortcoming on this deal was uh i guess i had a lot of shortcomings on this deal which is why i you know i turned to all the partners on this um i had a i was unsure about raising uh well we had to raise one and a half million for brace and uh i didn't feel i didn't have enough self-confidence to raise 1.5 million so i turned to alex on that thomas i didn't have the balance sheet that thomas had so you know thomas i need you and uh <laughs> <laughs> thomas uh thomas was right there to catch me when i fell and you know danny i i couldn't um I I had uh over a decade in construction construction management building commercial skyscrapers in Boston. 
but I, you know, I, I felt I needed Danny's help and expertise to, you know, get this deal over the, the finish line. And, you know, and I, I was, fortunately, I am, uh, able to operate the deal and, uh, give great returns to the investors. So, um, and I'm very appreciative for that opportunity. Yeah. So and th <laughs> those were kind of my shortcomings. Um, I guess I had a lot. <laughs> well, also, you know what? Interesting, too. You know, you talk about the returns for investors. We didn't know what we didn't know. All right. So we literally went like six, eight percent pref, 80, 20 split. If you go eight, if you go eight percent pref and you go 80, 20 split, you're literally going to not make any any money at all. Not, as the operators and all that, you don't make any money because you just gave 8% upfront. That gets paid before anything else. Then you do an 80-20 split. There's like $10 to do an 80-20 split <laughs> on. And we're, you know, so, you know, we did a great job. I think it was, we really, really focused it on investor first. And that was something that we all had in common that there was no like objections. You know, I thought that was really, really easy the way we did a relationship. It was like, Oh, okay. Is it for the investors? All right, cool. Let's just do that. And nobody had any like drawbacks or, you know, we, we were all on the same page. It was really cool. And it's a, it's a very fun asset to yeah. operate. So, and you know, <laughs> all right, Thomas, good. what was your shortcoming? We're going to answer this question and we'll go to Donna and there's a couple more questions in the chat. So, I mean, in terms of shortcomings, like everybody knows a little bit of everything, right? So, in our team too, everybody knew a little bit of everything. I knew a little bit of something, um, <laughs> you know. But so, so it, basically, it comes down comes down to three things, right? One is you got to have good investor relations if you're going to. Uh, somebody should be good at investor relations and communication if you're going to raise money. The second thing, somebody's got to be able to look at the financial projections and make sure that this property is going to cash flow. And thirdly, you got to have somebody with a construction background when the inspection reports and stuff like that come comes right. And then fourthly is the is a signing of the contracts and all that, which you can hire an attorney. Um, so basically, it's three things: investor relations, finances, and uh, construction background. So I I don't like looking at inspection reports. I'm not uh, into that kind of stuff. In investor relations, I can I'm okay with that. And financials, um, I'm okay with that, but I don't like to look at it for long periods of time. So, you know, I, I, my shortcomings are construction. I have no clue about construction. I mean, if you talk, I mean, I'm surprised that Alex you can build getting... a website. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when it comes to actual physical construction, I have no freaking clue. Like when I see, when, when they say, hey, we're going to do this developer, I just stay away because I don't know. <laughs> but I know it's lucrative, right? There is a lot of money. I wish I knew about it. But since I don't know, I stay. But in our team, this all came together. And like Alex was the other thing is nobody had like these um, strong personality is where like I need that or this needs to be done my way or the highway kind of deal. That was another cool thing, which I see a lot of partnerships getting messed up over that. So, so I'm I'm grateful for that. I think the personalities really meshed well, uh, more than anything. Yeah, for real. And you know, guys, I never even underwrote a multifamily deal or anything. I didn't even know how to underwrite, like with the sheets and everything, until July when John, we were at Rock Cleaves event. You were like teaching me how to underwrite that peanut factory deal. I never even looked at an underwriting sheet, right? So, like, there's a level of trust that gets to happen, too. You know, that was like, a Thomas... fun night. That was <laughs> well, a fun night. That was a fun night. <laughs> but for Up real, I was like, oh, this is how you use this underwriting <laughs> sheet, right? <laughs> oh, In the man. hotel lobby. Yeah. Underwriting deals. Yeah, I think y'all sent the LOI out that night, right? We did. <laughs> oh, that's it. It was late. It was late. It was late. Morning, Sign sealed and delivered, baby. Yeah. You know, the, the that's that, it's funny, but I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't recommend that, you know, don't learn how to underwrite and just jump into these things like learn it. Right. I was just very fortunate and I was, you know, I, I was willing to take a risk with these guys. Plus, I didn't put any money into the deal. <laughs> 
these guys just carried me along, like I said. So I was just grateful to be along on the ride. And I think that's a mentality that we, you know, that is uh, something great for for the success of a team is that when we can be in that space and just be grateful for each other's skills and talents, you know, we matched really, really well. So, okay, Donna, go ahead. Uh, hey, guys. How you doing? What's up, Donna? Hey. Hey, so when you started this journey together, the economy was very, very different than it is now. So what would you say to, you know, investors about, the current economy versus what you had. Go ahead, boys. Thomas, we'll start. So, yeah, that's that's actually the economy was starting to get bad at that time in terms of the interest rates. It was not the perfect scenario. We kind of, if you were talking about the best time to get in, we kind of missed that boat when we got into this deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, by two, yeah. So the interest rates started going up. We got like what is that five something, right? Our rate is yeah, we're yeah. five point one. Before that, people five. people were doing deals at three point and all, three point oh and all that stuff. So they getting in trouble now. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Their loans are coming due. <laughs> so the thing is, in bad and good economies, you just have to see, look at the numbers, and if the numbers make sense, any time is a good time to buy real estate. It's a good thing about real estate is it almost never loses value. It's not like stocks. If you bought a stock at a thousand bucks when it's all up and it came down, it may never come back to a thousand dollars. I mean, I know Microsoft at, in 2000 hit $500 a stock, sorry, 500 billion. And it took 20 years for it to get back to that after it came down. It doesn't happen in real estate. Almost it, you can, time will fix a lot of the issues in real estate. As long as you look at the numbers and you buy it at the right time, uh, buy it at the right numbers that make sense for the return of the investors and yourself, you're you're fine. So that's what we did. And and John did a great job of underwriting there, finding the deal. And that man, that deal is spitting cash like crazy. Smoking, like Alex said, smoking. I wish we as uh, partners had a better uh, return on that, <laughs> but that's all good as investors are making money, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, go ahead. You guys want to share any more to that question? Okay. I, mean, I think so, Thomas covered it. Yeah. Go ahead, John. If you want to? I I think you just have to be careful. You have oh, to yeah. be. You have to be I, smart. You have to. You know. If deals make sense today, like oh my god, buy it, right? Like yeah. that's like what Thomas was saying because. Yeah when you have low interest rate and then you have to refinance or you have to sell at a higher interest rate, you're going to lose a valuation. But if you can make a deal make sense today with the interest rates that are out there, when the interest rates reverse, you just, without doing anything, you capture that yeah. evaluation. Right? right. So I think we're at a point where it's, it's stabilized a little bit, but who knows what's going to happen in the future. You just got to get, you know, you got to be careful. I think all ultimately it comes down to the team also. Right. Somebody asked the question here. Are we stuck in any any bridge loans? Uh, yeah, we, we do have a deal in which we are paying almost 11 percent interest rates. Right now, we did pivot. We pivoted and we pivoted and we are we went full blown renovations. We've now leased that property up to 90 percent. One of them is almost 95. The other one's 85. We're going to refinance down to like a 5 percent. Right. We're, the deal is kind of working. We're a little bit in the red at 11%, but when that thing comes refinance into 5%, that thing is going to be cash flowing crazy, right? Now, our original business plan, this is the making deal that I'm talking about, guys. The our, our original plan was like slowly get cash flow, move people out, and we'll renovate as people move out. Like we weren't playing the slow game anymore. We were going to refinance in like three, th fourth year pretty much. Now we're going to be doing a refinance on the first quarter of next year, which is like a year and a half in. So you got to be able to pivot if you got the right people on your team. And, and this is when, you know, this is when the partnerships really are important. So, um, yeah, there is, there is, I mean, some people are, you only lose your deal if you run out of time and run out of money. All right. So we were very, very cautious in what we're doing. Um, another question is, did these, oh, wait, um, did these roles change over time? Wait, I thought there was another question above that. 
There was a question I answered. Oh, oh, you did. Okay. To where did you have specific rules assigned to each team member? If yes, how did you pick who did what? Ah, fuck okay. The, fuck the bank due diligence. And yeah. I, I just said you played to everybody's strengths. Yeah, we did. We played to everybody's strength. And, and this is kind of what I was just talking about. I felt like I didn't have the pressure of the loan on my shoulder. I didn't have the pressure of underwriting on my shoulder. I didn't have the pressure of like going through the inspections on my shoulders. Right. Like that is and they didn't have the, as much of the pressure. I mean, when it comes to capital raising, everybody's going to have that stress a little bit. Right. That comes down to yeah. uh, we need to get to this amount of money by this time. But, you know, that's the, the, those, are, those are the things. The other thing, sorry to jump in, Alex. Oh, you're good. Um, you can hire anyone to do anything. It just costs money. Just like you hire a debt broker to find you the best debt out there. We hired uh, Bob Damagella with Marcus and Millichap. He you got call him Bob. Debt. That's pretty funny. Bob, Robert. Okay, you Robert. guys are on a Bob. Bob, first name, basically. Bob, like that. Robert, Bobbert. <laughs> um, if it, uh, you, you hire an insurance agent to find you the insurance, the best insurance for that asset, they that that's what they specialize in. They know the best places to get the best debt, the best insurance, and to find those puzzle pieces, if you will. For that deal you know what's funny because you were dealing with all of that i didn't have that on my shoulders i actually had to go back and learn and figure out oh my god <laughs> you could have called me what, Alex. what is our what was our insurance what is this i had to go re go back and learn but the amazing thing about this partnership about multifamily real estate is that if you have the right partners like this when you learn how to focus on relationships this is like you a part of that becomes passive learning too Right. Like less risk for me to learn with this team than for me to go and fall on my face. I did that with a restaurant. You know, I lost I lost my shirt. I lost everything when I was doing a restaurant on my own. So I love partnerships and I focus so much on like, what does it take for me to be a good partner? Right. Like the level of communication and, you know, the level of trust that I have to have, because I know I rather have that than to be, you know, doing it on my own. Um, Nagar said, what was your main role, Alex? Yeah, raise capital. That's really the only thing I focus on. I'm focused on raising capital and doing these Zoom calls. <laughs> it's like a skill that I, I leaned into my area of interest and my area of expertise. Right? I was pretty good at it. And I just needed a little tweaking here and there. And they told me what to say. And, you know, I just did my dance. And I didn't have to worry about all that insurance and loan and all that stuff. But awesome. Let's see, there's another one. If there was another pandemic, no problem. I don't know. I mean, it just we gotta we gotta see when the pandemic comes, right? Like I don't I don't know what Roll that pandemic gonna look like. <laughs> uh let's see, we got another question. Let me bring let me bring uh Jason. Wow, that's a cool name to spell Jason. Cool way. Um, but wait, let me see. We have is there anything you you will do differently? If you had to do it again now, knowing what you know now versus then, yeah, I would do a lot more deals with these guys. <laughs> Which we, uh, it might be, it Let's might be do time. it. <laughs> it's, it might be time. <laughs> yes, thank you for that question. Um, Jason, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Alex? Um, so I just got a quick question for your team. So, what are some of the things that you guys did to prepare yourselves to get to the next level? I think for me, the biggest thing was education. You, you just, to find that confidence, you've got to get edu educated. Uh, whether that's attending events, seminars, webinars, being in the room, serving the water, whatever, right? Um, I think that was my biggest thing is just the, the education piece of it. Yeah. And every one of us, I think all of us joined Grant, Grant's Mastermind. Like we just needed to be in the room. Even though maybe some of the stuff I was like, fly over my head. But I was like, I'm in here. Like, I get to soak this up regardless. And if I don't understand it, I'm going to ask the questions. and I'm going to keep listening to it over and over until I get it. So that education, like confidence is going to come from your knowledge and your experience, right? So the more knowledge you can get, like this is a space for you guys, everyone here to just like soak up as, as, as much as you can. 
So we're gonna we're gonna finish off your questions so you guys can answer. Uh, go ahead, John, Thomas, and Danny. I think Danny nailed it. So yeah, education, yeah. education networking. Yeah, I would say I, the last. I, I oh, would go ahead. say networking. Right. Networking, who you know, because if you have a problem, it's gonna be someone else that is gonna solve it. Someone else is gonna have that key, right, Alex? Yes. Is that the analogy? Right, Thomas. <laughs> so, um, you know, re really, it's who you know. It's you know. Um, I I would add one more you. thing. I really think the one thing that that I leaned on really, I, I think, is really important to get yourself ready is personal development work. Right. This is kind of the same thing as a little bit of the knowledge part, but just learning about yourself, right? Going through different types of trainings and stuff that you really get to know who you are and what you're what you want to bring to the table. You know, one of the biggest things that, that that has stuck with me always is if it's to be, it's up to me. That means it's my responsibility for this relationship in our group. You know, I took it on my own personal responsibility because once you start to focus and become a victim of other people. That's when things start to fall apart. So a big part of personal development is like to recognize that, you know, you are you are it. You are the source of anything that's showing up in the relationship. And uh, so personal development for me plays a huge role in everything that I do in my life. And I think it has prepared me to be a, you know, a good partner with this team. If it's to be, it's up to me. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So any last things that, you know, you OG legends want to share with everybody before we break people out into rooms? Take the chance. Take the Keep lead. showing up. Show up. Keep showing up. Yep. Yeah. Show up. Get off step one. Yeah. What, what was the saying? Don't, don't show off, show up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, first I'm going to, take us into i'm going to take a group picture first so you know oh, for, i love for us, that for idea oh geez text me that out i will i will wait hold on i'm gonna put mike <laughs> bailey's picture in there too okay and then i'm gonna take you guys off this and we can all kind of jump into a little picture together and then we're gonna break you guys out into breakout rooms this is the time to really stick around i know a lot of people don't want to talk to people but <laughs> This is how this partnership even started. So say cheese, everybody. If you want to come on camera, you got three seconds to do it before I snap this picture. Three, two, one. All right. Dope. Okay. Hey, uh, let's see. Is Nick over here? I thought I saw Nick join. Yeah, there is. Hey, Nick, can you break everybody okay. out into their breakout rooms? <laughs> I need co host first. But... Oh, right. And everybody feels guys good. i miss you it's been so long <laughs> what's up man Nick. how's it going what's going, on, what's going on man? i was looking at old pictures for the flyers and i was i saw our pictures from rod cleef's conference oh man <laughs> good wow. times good times all right so you know thomas danny john feel free to hang around if you want to jump into rooms with people um yeah. but yeah this sure. is this is a great time to connect you know, you guys are going to get about 15 minutes in your rooms. Don't hog up all the time. Give people the opportunity to share. Wait, wait, wait. Before we go, before we go, hold on. Wow. Don't leave, y'all. Okay. That already <laughs> happened. Okay. No, go ahead. Go to your room. I'll share after.
Oh, I also stopped the recording, Alex. Hi, okay. recording. Hi, recording.